next on BBC Two. More frivolity from Kelly Monteith, if you enjoy that sort of thing. Hi there, I'm Kelly Monteith and welcome to episode 6 of Kelly Monteith's BBC Memories. Now this little scene is uh, one of two uh, museum scenes that I did in the shows. Uh, the last, the second one I think is in episode or series 6. Uh, the statue actually came from the uh, British Museum. I didn't know they, they, they really were alive, which of course I'm joking. And the set, you see, was actually done on the soundstage, um, which they did really good pretty good production uh, at the BBC. I mean, just the sets and the, the props and everything was um, just amazing when, <laughs> when I think back about it. The next series of clips is about traveling, and this first one involves an overzealous uh, bellman. Now, I've been traveling for majority of my adult life, and I've dealt with a lot of these. I've been in hotels uh, more than I can even remember. And sometimes you get a bellman that comes up, and before you're even ready, he grabs your suitcase, and he's gone. And this is what uh, this clip uh, kind of illustrates. This one ready, sir? Yeah, this one's already here. And Hope I you think enjoyed your are... stay with us, sir. Yes, sir, I love it. One day at a time. Never look back. That will always shake. We had a good stay, sir. So you up, sir? No. Then I'll pull your cabby. Thank you. I remember this vividly. It was done in a hotel in uh, Bournemouth, uh, a little resort town in, in the uh, southwest coast of uh, Britain, or west coast, or south, or east. I'm not sure. I've never seen Britain with a uh, temperature, uh, with a um, directional thing underneath. So I, they always said the west, but I never could figure out what part of Britain was the west because I never saw uh, a north-south little direction put over the uh, over the country. Uh, that's neither here nor there. I remember this scene, I remember this hotel in, in Bournemouth, and I wore actually uh, a kind of tie I really never, it was a knit tie, and I never wore those kind of knit ties, but I needed a tie like that that stretched for this uh, particular scene. <laughs> These next series of clips um, take place on some place I've spent probably most of my life, uh, airplanes. I think I've spent more of my life above clouds than I have below them. And I think I encapsulated a lot of the different characters that I've met over the years on planes in, into these various clips. We had a, a series of different personalities that I would run into. Um, and I think if you travel a lot, you might find this um, uh, relatable. At any rate, uh, take a look. I mean, look at who I ended up with. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I really am. Well, I'm sorry. I stepped on your foot. I'm sorry. I felt nothing. You didn't? We don't believe in pain. <coughs> Who's we? The divine seekers of cosmic truth, as revealed to Sig Manjabi. Sig Manjabi? Don't think I ever heard of him. He used to be a second-hand car dealer. <laughs> he renounced everything when he heard a voice in the night. A voice in the night? What did it say? If you don't get out of town and stop fooling about with my wife, I'm going to blow your brains out. <laughs> he called it his Damascus experience. It moved him to a higher plane. Yeah, I'll bet. First plane out of town. <laughs> no, no, a higher plane of cosmic consciousness. I myself am at the fourth level. Well, uh, how many levels are there? 368. <laughs> I'm making a pilgrimage to Kathmandu. Do you know how long I've been on this aircraft? <laughs> Six months? Not quite. 52 hours. 
I still have 36 more to go before I reach the Himalayas. We ought to break your trip, you know, stop off in London. Maybe, uh, maybe pop down to Bath. <laughs> what? Bath, Bath, you know, nice place to see. <laughs> also a nice thing to do. <laughs> no, no, we never put water on our bodies. It's against our belief. Excuse me. I must meditate. Okay. <coughs> Are you okay? <laughs> you want me to get some water? I'll get a stewardess. <laughs> what I would really like is a cigarette. <laughs> Boy, have times changed. God knows what that guy's spreading. Oh, have you seen the pandemic flasher? Well, I'm about to change seats uh, on this uh, flight here, which I'm really kind of reluctant to do on a flight. Um, I'm always afraid that uh, the seat that I, I move to, uh, something might happen, you know, like the, you know, like the, there's a, a hole opens up in the plane and I'm <laughs> just sucked out of the plane. And, you know, if, if I'm going to be sucked to death, I certainly don't want it to be by a plane. At any rate, um, I've always been kind of reluctant to that, you know, and people say, well, if he hadn't changed seats, he'd still be alive. But on this one, I changed seats and into an even more uh, awful person <laughs> that I sit next to. And I'm sure a lot of people that have flown have sat next to somebody like this. Hi! How are you? What's your name? My name's Midge. Midge Fisher. Mrs. Midge Fisher, in case you get any ideas. Not that I'm married. I was married. Otherwise, I wouldn't be called Mrs., would I? My husband's not alive. He's dead now. Yeah, that's usually the sequence. <laughs> He died three years ago, drank himself to death. Mm -hmm. I tried to talk him out of it, but the more I talked, the more he drank. <laughs> That's too bad. How long were you married? Three weeks. <laughs> he was my second husband. Mm -hmm. My first husband committed suicide. Mm -hmm. I tried to talk him out of it. Hardly had the words out of my mouth when he threw himself off the cliff. Mm, what a shame. <laughs> Ruined the honeymoon. <laughs> about people. Have you got any children? I've got two daughters and a son. They moved away, but I moved close. They were so grateful. They're always sending me away on trips. <laughs> Wonder why? They like me to travel. Yeah. I like to travel. I was in Washington, A.C. Mm. Or was it D.C.? A.C. D.C. Anyway, one of those people. <laughs> you meet such interesting people when you travel. People you can talk to. You can really take an interest in what you say. Oh, uh, I say it myself, I'm a very Excuse good me, listener. miss. Is uh, this seat taken here? No. <laughs> excuse me, miss. Is, uh, is something wrong? I'm scared. Oh, Lord, I'm scared. Oh, miss, really, there's nothing to worry about. I've flown hundreds of times. I mean, as soon as a plane takes off, you'll completely forget the fact that you're 30,000 feet in the air. 30,000 feet, but it's so heavy. How can a plane with all these people and luggage? I mean, what holds us up? Usually an air traffic controller strike. <laughs> I mean, what holds us up there? Air. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you see, it's pushed under the wings as a plane goes through the air at 900 miles an hour. 900 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> 30,000 feet. Mm -hmm. Nothing but air to hold us up. Right. <laughs> Look, maybe if you read something, that might uh, take your mind off a uh, dive bomber. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, uh, as flying as uh, many years have I had, there's no shortage of people like that on flights that are just petrified of flying. There's white knuckle people. Um, and I always sympathize with them, especially it's even worse if you hit turbulence. Oh my God, then it's uh, all bets are off. But now I change seats once again. Um, there again, against my philosophy about uh, changing seats on a plane. And um, I have a little uh, incident with uh, my seat on this one. So check it out. It's like I'm stuck in the middle seat. 
Oh, I hate the middle seat. Got to sit here through the whole flight and play King of the Castle with the armrests, you know? Because <laughs> yeah. when you get the middle seat, that means you got there last, and the two people next to you got the armrests locked in, so I got nothing to do with my arm, you know? It's just so uncomfortable. Can't keep my hands in my lap too long, people get suspicious. <laughs> Stewardess is a pervert sitting next to me. <laughs> Has his hands in his lap and keeps smiling. <laughs> I usually devise ways to get him to know, like I'll wait for a guy to scratch his nose and <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait this guy to doze, and I'll take my elbow and move it in between his arm and his seat back and just <laughs> slide it off. Got him up. <laughs> and then once you get him, you can't give him up. I gotta sit like this the rest of the flight. <laughs> Ever thumb through Time magazine with your tongue? <laughs> Any minute now, the pilot's gonna come on and give some little speech that nobody's gonna understand. Nobody. Catch about three words of the whole thing. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your pilot, Captain Nottingham speaking, and I'd like to welcome you on board Flight 702. <laughs> In the unlikely event of an emergency, that if you uh, have a baby. <laughs> Enjoy your flight. Easy for him to say. He's got a good seat. <laughs> Probably just as well I don't get a meal because I hate to eat on planes. First place, every airline's got the same rule. Serve the meal, then search for turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> you got such a confined little space, you know, and the meals, they're so little. You get these little bitty salads, little bitty steak, little bitty salad dressing, little bitty salt, little bitty pepper. It's like eating with the seven dwarfs. <laughs> First time with the wee people? <laughs> well, at least I can relax a little. There's a recline button on this here. Might as well go back and get some relaxation. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my seat back's broken. <laughs> You're just saying that. <laughs> it's interesting to me, this was shot 41 years ago, and of course attitudes towards the uh, LGBTQ community has changed a lot. Back in those days, there was nothing like that. It was difficult to find somebody to play that role because they didn't want to be typecast. It's so different today and so much better, actually. But anyway, uh, finally the flight does land. And anybody that's flown um, probably realizes once the flight lands and they make that announcement, then all hell breaks loose. And incidentally, uh, on the set here, the aisle in the plane is about 30 times wider than a normal <laughs> aisle on a plane, because usually you get those little narrow aisles that you can't do anything, you know. You want, you want to go to the bathroom, you gotta go down sideways like this, just to get by people. And then of course, here, here comes a cart. Oh boy, I gotta, I gotta go back to my seat for God's sake. Anyway, uh, check this out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to London. We request that you remain seated with your seat. <laughs> Oh boy, how many times I've been through that, you know? And it's, uh, if you're in the back of the plane, it takes forever for you to finally get out. And I was, uh, I have a system now, if I look uh, way ahead, uh, I can, if, uh, as long as I see heads starting to bob, then I know that the uh, door's open and people are leaving. But if you're way in the back, and then I always get behind the guy that uh, has to go up in the, uh, into the overhead bin and get his bag out, which is much too big to fit in the over bin. So he's got to, we got to have five or six people help him get it out. Well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, little segment on travel, which was a major portion of my life. And I hope I kind of uh, showed you the, uh, the comedy side of it. At any rate, um, thank you for tuning in and don't forget to tune in next week for more of Kelly Monteith's BBC Memories. And right now I'm going to head down to baggage claim to see if my bag uh, arrived here or is probably in uh, Calcutta. <laughs>